The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Welcome to the halls of mystery, the corridors of terror where the impossible becomes the probable and the unexpected becomes the accepted. Because in this exciting theater of the mind, the things you don't see but imagine are far more terrifying than anything we might show you. Oh, you hear strange things and these will conjure pictures that only you can produce. For starters, let's listen in on a phone conversation between electronics engineer Roy Watson and his boss, Andy Carter. And hello, Roy. I know it's 10 o'clock at night, but I've got something strange over here at the lab. Can you come right over? Well, sure, Andy. Well, what's up? It's something on the L-43 tape recorder. The one I brought home the other night? Yeah, and while you were using it, it picked up those sounds you've been telling me about. Well, the mice? I don't know what you've got in those walls of yours, but they're sure not mice. I want you to get over here and listen to them. Our mystery drama, Sagamore Cottage, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Bob Caliban and Carmen Matthews. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Large houses have large shadows and large secrets. Far out on Long Island, New York, sits a large house with very large shadows. The Sagamore Estate once the showplace of the island. The estate still stands, but the happy days have died with the generations. To make ends meet in maintaining the estate, Miss Eleanor Sagamore, the last remaining family member, rents out a small cottage, the caretaker's cottage in better days. And it's to this cottage and this foreboding estate that young Roy and Peggy Watson are now traveling. Two destinies are fast approaching each other, and what will happen, only time can tell. Well, we ought to be within sight of it soon. The real estate agent said it was only ten miles. Roy, did you think he acted funny? About our renting the cottage? Yes. Well, frankly, I did. He insisted there were better and more attractive places, but not for the price. We don't have to take it. Oh, there, up ahead. That must be it. Oh, it has to be it. From the description we got, we'll be there in a minute. I... I don't see any cottage yet. It must be behind the house. Yeah, it probably is. The gatehouses were near the front of the estates. The caretakers live back in the gardens. Hmm, it's been some time since anyone cared for these grounds. Well, I imagine the old girl has little enough to live on without expensive gardeners. Oh, the house doesn't look too bad. But I'm sure it's nothing like it was. Huh? Let's go. She must have seen us arriving. It's so still. How does she stand it all alone? That's her problem. Come on. You didn't have to ring. I saw you. Uh, Miss Sagamore, we're the people about renting the cottage. I know it. Who else would be coming up to Sagamore? Well, uh, can we see it? You'll have to see Miss Sagamore first. She must decide if you're right for it. Well, then you're not... To... I'm Margareta. Show them in, Margareta. Don't stand there crabbing. You heard her. Come in. I'm Miss Sagamore. How do you do? That will be all, Margareta. Yes, Miss Sagamore. <sighs> Shall we retire to the library? Actually, even I could answer the door faster than Margareta, but she's been here so long I couldn't hurt her feelings. <laughs> I have to allow her the chores. I understand. It's nice of you. 
We arrived at Sagamore the very same day. She came to work as a housemaid the day I was born. But you're interested in the cottage, not in us? Well, uh, we would like to see it. Please sit down. What brings you to the island, Mr. Watson, is it? Yes. I'm uh, starting a new job out here with Crown Electronics. Oh, that ghastly building two miles down. I've heard they do evil things in there. No, no, it's a, it's an electronics research firm. Ray guns and weapons? Uh, not quite. Uh, we're experimenting with a new transistor. I've been hired to head a team. It's my specialty. I know nothing about it except it's evil. But I won't hold it against you. I like you both. You know Mrs. Watson? You strongly resemble Mary Antoinette. Has anyone ever told you that? Oh, well, no. A striking resemblance. Turn your head a little to the side. Oh, well... Yes, I... even the profile. Uh, perhaps we could see the cottage? Oh, of course. I get carried away sometimes. <laughs> That's all right. I knew I married a queen. It's quite remarkable. Quite. Well, what do you think? It's absolutely charming. Oh, suits me fine. <laughs> then you'll take it. I'm so glad. The rent's only 200 a month. And that's the best part about it. <laughs> we hope to have our own place by next summer, but living here will be a delight. It has a lot of character. Well, then let's go back to the main house, and I'll give you a receipt for the first month's rent. I don't ask for a lease or anything like that. You, you look like reliable people. Thank you. And desirable people... Very desirable. Oh, even the China's expensive, Roy. Limoges, yet. In a rental cottage. First class all the way. <laughs> Look, uh, you get settled in. I'm uh, going to run over to the labs and let Andy know I've arrived. Okay. The place is so clean, there's not much to do. I'll see you later, my queen. Roy, uh, she gave me the creeps when she told me I looked like Marie Antoinette. Why? I thought it was a compliment. Well, it probably was, but the way she looked at me, scrutinized is the word, I felt so uncomfortable. Forget it. She probably won't mention it again. <laughs> didn't expect you till Monday. When'd you get in town? Yesterday. We wanted to get settled first, so we drove in and got us a place to stay. Great. But you don't have to be on the job till Monday. Oh, I thought I'd take a couple of days to look around, get familiar with the plan ahead of time. I like that kind of attitude. I think we're going to work well together. Well, that's why I took the job. Come on this way. I'll show you your office. Uh, where are you staying? You find an apartment in town? Oh, better than that. We took the cottage on the Sagamore estate, two miles down the road. Oh, the Sagamore place with that wacky old dame. Oh, she seemed okay to us. Peg loves the place. Oh, you wish you weren't renting there. Why? Because Miss Sagamore's different? The well, last two tenants in that cottage, first an elderly man and then after him a young widow, disappeared. Disappeared? They apparently left and never came back. Nobody bothered about the old man, but... When the young widow disappeared, her folks came looking for her. They were frantic. And she was never found? I don't know. Never heard any more about it. It was three or four months ago. They passed her picture out all over the place, hoping someone had seen her. But surely they didn't think Miss Sagamore... Oh, no. She seemed as surprised as anyone else that they'd left. In fact, I, I still have one of the pictures here. Kept it just in case there was a way to help those people. Oh. Attractive, isn't she? Yeah. Just 26. Sort of looks like Marilyn Monroe in a way. A little darker, though. I still wish you'd move out of there. You find me two bedrooms, carpeting, fireplace, and utilities for 200 a month, and I will. Well, you win. But watch your step. I don't know what it is about that place, but I don't want to lose a good assistant. Hello. May I come up? Oh, Oh, Miss Sagamore, of course. Well, I just stopped by to see if everything's all right. Just perfect. It's beautiful. Yes, it is a charming cottage. And it's so nice to have someone in it again. It's been vacant for several months. I can't imagine why. It's so lovely. 
Oh, people around here have strange ideas. Oh, I, I did want to mention, Mrs. Watson, not to let Margareta bother you. Sometimes she says and does things that... Oh, well, she's, she's getting on in years. I understand. Oh, and by the way, should you hear music from the main house tonight, it's just a little party I'm having. I do hope you won't feel offended that I haven't invited you. It's just some very close friends. Oh, of course I won't. We've only just met. I, I wouldn't expect... I do love my little parties. I'll have you and Mr. Watson over soon. Oh, that's very kind, but... I expect he'll be working late a lot with the new job and all. Oh, of course. Well, there's lots of time. I must get back. I don't like to leave Margaret alone too long. Thanks for coming by. Oh, Mr. Watson's coming up the drive. Oh, he's home sooner than I expected. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you both, my dear. My Mary Antoinette. I hope you'll stay a long, long time. Certainly. Shall we get a place of our own? Hi, honey. Hi, Roy. Well, I'll leave you two to each other. Good day, Mrs. Watson. Oh, hi, Miss Sagamore. Good day, Mr. Watson. You're back early. Oh, not really. Annie and I went over the plant, and I'll go back early tomorrow. Yeah. What did Miss Sagamore want? Oh, just to see if everything was all right. Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. Why? You look... Well, a, a cloud passed over your face. Oh, I'm just thinking about the new job, I guess. Oh, come on. Let's go out for dinner. You should eat your potatoes. I'm not hungry. You know, I never eat very much before a party. I don't know why you insist on filling my plate with a lot of food I won't eat. Mm. It's not the party. It's them, isn't it? Yes. Do you think it's wise so soon? I don't care. I must. Hmm? Uh, do you want me to begin? You can start the preparations. But I want to think a little more about him. Oh, I'm bushed. I'm not even going to watch the news. That sounds as though things are in full swing at the main house. You said she was having a party, huh? Mm-hmm some close friends. She apologized for not inviting us. That's funny. I didn't see any cars parked out there. I'll get the light. I wonder why she has a party on the second floor. Looks like there's dancing going on behind the curtains. With a house that size, she's probably got ten living rooms. Unzip, please, huh? I want to get an early start at the plant tomorrow. I still wonder why there weren't any cars out front. What? If Miss Sagamore's having a party, well, wouldn't there be cars? Well, you'd think so, but oh, who knows. Maybe they all came in one car, parked in the garage. <laughs> I'm too tired to care. Maybe I'll take the train into New York City next week. I'm dying to see Fifth Avenue. Oh, you'll love it. You ready for the light out? I was ready an hour ago. Listen. You're lucky I'm not afraid of mice. Sounds like we have a visitor. See it? It's behind her. In the wall. Oh, I guess the fields are full of him. Oh, if he's not bothering you, he won't bother me. They're kind of cute anyway. <sighs> okay. Night, honey. Night. <sighs> Persistent little character. Mm-hmm. It seems that Sagamore Cottage has more than Peggy and Roy Watson for tenants. But then, as Peggy said, field mice are kind of cute. They're really not undesirable, and they generally mind their own business. So Roy and Peggy really have nothing to worry about with a field mouse in the walls. That is, if it is only a field mouse. We'll return to Sagamore Cottage shortly with Act Two. Skittering in the walls of your bedroom is not exactly conducive to sleep. And for Peggy and Roy Watson, it was a restless night. The rustling in the bedroom wall stopped after a while, but the next day at Roy's office... Morning, Roy. 
Hey, why the long face? Oh, not much sleep last night. Oh? Mice kept us awake half the night. <laughs> Mice? <laughs> In the walls, rustling and squeaking. Yeah, I told you you shouldn't have rented that place. And Peg's going in to get some traps when she goes shopping. A cat's better if they're field mice. And they probably are. They can grab that bait without setting off the trap. They don't weigh half an ounce, you know. But a cat, now he'll take care of them. Yeah, maybe you got a point. I'll talk to Peg about it tonight. Feel like starting on that transistor scheme today? Sure. Fine. I'll have Jim McDonald set you up. And say, you might check with him about a cat. His house usually has a litter or two. His wife has a soft heart for strays. <laughs> okay, I'll get me a cat. Oh, isn't he sweet? Yeah, Jim said he's almost a year. Just right for mousing. <laughs> well, the traps didn't catch anything in two days. Maybe just having the cat around will scare the mice off. Oh, you're beautiful. I'm going to call you Tiger because you're such a ferocious looking fellow. Mm, I love you already. There, down you go. And scare some mice. You want some help with dinner? Nope. Everything's ready. Mix with the cocktail. What's the matter, Tiger? Oh, he's backing away from something, but what? Oh, great. Our first cat, and he's afraid of mice. Oh, come here, Tiger. What's the matter? Well, he seemed to be calming down a little. Something frightened him. Well, he's supposed to do the frightening. <laughs> the sounds haven't been too bad for the past couple of nights, though. You, you seen anything of Miss Sagamore? Oh, she dropped by this afternoon with some flowers. Pathetic little Violet. She said she grew herself. I think they're growing wild all around the property. She talks too much, but she's really very pleasant. That housekeeper gives me the willies, though. I don't know how she stands her. Time for your tea, Miss Tagamore. Oh, I don't want it, Margaret. That doesn't matter. It's time. Oh, if things are to work, they must be done exactly. It's always been that way, you know it. But I still can't see what my tea time has to do with it. It has always worked. Don't question it. The violets are in the house. Yes. She didn't seem surprised or anything. No reason to be surprised over a few violets. Is it ready yet? Almost. I can hardly wait. You know, they all take time. And some are slower than others. Uh, drink your tea. And I want you to stay in bed tomorrow. But I was going... You'll stay in bed tomorrow. <sighs> yes, Margareta. I'll stay in bed. I closed the house door behind me when I left. Oh, hello, Tiger. Hey, you didn't open the door, did you? Well, it's a good thing I came back for the tape measure. I'll be sure to lock it this time. Oh, oh, oh Margareta. Oh, Mrs. Watson. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I, I just came to see if everything was all right, if you needed anything. I am the housekeeper. I keep my own house, thank you. I don't mean to be rude, but I, I don't want you or Miss Sagamore coming in here when we're not home. Oh, I, I'm sorry if I've upset you, Mrs. Watson. Good morning. Goodbye. If there is a way I can be of service, please call. That chance. <laughs> I don't like that woman. The sooner things start working, the better. It can't be too soon to suit me. I wish she hadn't surprised me in the cottage. It's just liable to make her too suspicious. I suppose I was rude, but I didn't like her snooping. And I'm sure that's what it was, snooping. You want me to speak to Miss Sagamore? Oh, no, I, I don't think we'll have any more trouble with Margareta. I let her know how I felt. What's the matter, dear? Do you notice a funny odor? No, not really. Sort of like uh, seaweed. 
Well, a little, now that you've got me thinking about it. But this is Long Island. Nothing but salt air and seaweed. Yeah, I suppose. I just hadn't noticed it before. Here's your drink. Thanks. Good grief, my rings. <laughs> I've heard of throwing your weight around, but not your rings. <laughs> It's never happened before my engagement and my wedding ring, both. They just slipped off when I reached for the glass. Here they are. Oh, they're usually too snug. Why? Look how, how they slide on my finger. I don't understand it all of a sudden. Beats me. I, I don't see how they could get larger just like that. You'll have to have a jeweler put those doohickeys on them to make them smaller. Well, I'd better keep them off for now. I'll lose them if I try to wear them like this. I have some work to do tonight. I thought it'd be easier to do here. Uh Uh-oh. There they go again. Oh, I've given up on Tiger. We're just going to have to live with those noises. Here. Look at this. Looks like a watch. No, a tape recorder. You're kidding. That's small? Oh, this is nothing to what we expect to do. Someday a recorder smaller than a diamond in that ring of yours. This one actually works. Microphone, tape, speaker... All in this little case, no bigger than a pocket watch. Fascinating. But you have to work. I better get dinner. I'll have my second drink in the kitchen. Oh. Honey, take it easy. I'm all right. My right shoe just slipped off when I stood up. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Watson. I hope you don't mind a visit. No, of course not. I want to apologize for Margareta being here yesterday. As I told you, she's getting on in years, and sometimes, well, (laughs) she's set in her ways. Always has to have someone or something to care for. I'm sorry if I was rude to her, but I I didn't like her being in the house that way. How are you feeling? Feeling? (gasps) Fine. Why? You're looking a little thinner. You notice? Well, I'm afraid so, but... uh... Oh, then it's probably just a change, the adjustment to a new life. I, um, I have found that my clothes, uh, my my rings are looser. Well, that's not so bad. Overweight can be a problem. But I I was never... It doesn't matter. I'm, uh, I'm having another party next Saturday night. The last one didn't disturb you, did it? Oh, no. Good. One of these days... You and Mr. Watson must come to the ballroom. You particularly. I know you'll find it enchanting someday. You'll see. Yes. That's very nice of you. (laughs) Well, I must go. Margareta gets nervous when I'm out of her sight for too long. Good day, Mrs. Watson. Well, let's face it, Peg. We've both got to see a doctor. This weight loss isn't natural. I know. I'm feeling weaker, too. My suits are all a size too big. We've been losing weight. Now, Andy wants us to see the company doctor. He says she's great, and we don't know any other. She? Yeah, a lady doctor. She has a private practice in town, but she treats all the company employees. Well, all right. Maybe we'd better. Maybe it's a virus or something. I mean, for both of us to be this way... is negative, Mr. Watson. No anemia, no tumors, no blood infection, no problem in the digestive tract, nothing that would produce such a weight loss in you and Mrs. Watson. Well, it's encouraging, Doctor, to know we're healthy, but we are getting thinner. Yes, well, the only thing I can suggest is going into the hospital for extended observation. Oh, no. I can't do that. Well, Andy will give you the time off if I feel it's necessary. I don't see what more you can do. You've made all the tests, and there's nothing wrong. Oh, there is something wrong, but we have to search further than the lab tests and x-rays. There seems to be no pathological cause for your condition. Well, I don't want to go into the hospital now. We'll wait a while. If we keep losing, well, then we may think differently, but it's probably just fatigue. Roy starting the new job and and the change for me. Mm -hmm. That's possible, but look, if the condition persists, I urge you to do it my way. Oh, 
get it. Hello? Hello, Roy. I know it's 10 o'clock at night, but I've got something strange over here at the lab. Can you come over? Oh, well, sure. What's up? It's on that tape in the L-43 tape recorder. Well, the one I brought home the other night? Yeah. I don't know what you've got in those walls of yours, but they sure aren't mice. I want you to get over here and listen to them. Hi, Peg. I hope you don't mind my tagging along, Andy. I'm curious, too. Not at all. Let's go in the lab. What's the sound, Andy? I was testing the L-43 and discovered you must have had it going while you had it home. Yeah, I was showing it to Peg. Whether you knew it or not, you were taping the sounds in your walls. They came in very distinctly. But when I played it back at half speed, it it seemed to talk. What? Well, here, listen. Now, this is the sound at normal speed. Now, at half. A human voice. I don't know if it's human, but it is a voice saying something. We can't slow the L-43 anymore, but if we re-record and slow the master tape further, we might understand it. But what can it be? There, there's no one behind the wall, unless they're ghosts. Or coincidence. It, variable speeds on tape recorders can produce curious sounds. I'd like to do some more taping in the cottage, Roy, with more refined equipment. Well, I have no objections. Well, how about tomorrow night? The sounds get going at nighttime, don't they? Usually. I'll bring over the M2400 model. It's the most sensitive recorder we've got. Okay. Well, there's uh, no harm in experimenting. If you two insist, then come for dinner, Andy. You can have your fun over brandy. I hope Andy likes Sauerbraten. I guess I should have asked. I think he'll eat anything as long as it's home-cooked and not his usual bachelor fare. Well, there you are, Tiger. Your dinner's in the corner. Oh, his highness finally showed up, huh? Well, he's not wet. He must have been in the bedroom. Look. Wait, he's got something in his mouth. Oh, I'll bet he finally caught one of the... Oh, what would he catch? Well, let's see. What you got, Tiger? Hmm? Come on, drop it. What, what is it? Well, Tiger, that's no way to act. Well, nothing but a hunk of straw. Oh, <laughs> well, there's your seaweed smell. Well, let's see. It's a little straw doll. Oh. I wonder where he found it. Well, he seems to like it. <laughs> it's his toy. <laughs> look at him play with it. <laughs> well, I, I, I've got to look at the potatoes. Oh, uh, there's Andy. I'll get it. Hi, Roy. That's really I hope. No, never. Come on in. Yeah, where can I put this tape machine? Uh, over here on the table. We'll uh, set it up after dinner. Oh, things have been quiet tonight. Hi, Andy. The cook will be with you for cocktails in a minute. Yeah, good time. Charming little place here, all right. Uh, what's going on up at the main house? Oh, another of uh, Miss Sagamore's parties, probably. Hmm, I thought I heard music up there. Fix the drinks, Roy. I'll be right in. Yeah, Andy? Mm, scotch is fine. Something wrong? Just an odor. I've smelled somewhere before. Oh, yeah. That's Peg's sauerbraten. No, no, it's not that. Well, what is it, Andy? Oh, you must have noticed it. Oh, that damp seaweed smell. Yeah, yeah, we have it all the time. Well, we've gotten used to it. You can't live near the beach without sea smell. Andy, what's the matter, for heaven's sake? That's not seaweed. It, it's straw. An unmistakable odor. And there's only one thing that smells like that. Just exactly like that. What? The straw in a voodoo doll. Things at Sagamore Cottage seem stranger all the time. Noises in the walls. The Watson's weight problem. And now, voodoo? In the 1970s, on Long Island? Well, they tell me it's not limited to Haiti. But is it really a voodoo doll? Or just something the cat dragged in? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act 3. Good rentals are hard to come by these days. 
to get a delightful cottage on Long Island with wall-to-wall carpeting, fireplace, utilities, two bedrooms furnished, and all for $200 a month? Well, you've got to expect some drawbacks, like noises in the walls and perhaps voodoo dolls the cat brings in. Are you serious, Andy? I had some experience with them when I was on college field training in the West Indies. And there's no smell quite like the straw of a voodoo doll. It, it's quite unmistakable. But voodoo here? Oh, good Lord. That thing Tiger brought in. It was a hunk of straw. It's shaped like a little doll. What? Well, the, the cat had a straw thing in here earlier. We didn't think anything about it. Where is it? Well, Tiger was playing with it like a toy. It, it must be around here someplace. Well, forget dinner for the moment, please. I must see that thing. Well, I'll see if Tiger's in the bedroom. Well, uh, he brought it into the kitchen first. Let's, uh, let's try there, Andy. Now, you may think I'm making too much of this. Well, I, I don't know what to think, but you don't expect me to believe Miss Sagamore and that weirdo maid of hers are bewitching us. Look, I smell something I don't like. You describe a straw doll the cat found. Now, that's a hex. No matter who's pulling it off. Somehow, I just can't take this seriously. Well, Tiger's in the bedroom sleeping, but I can't find that thing. I, I don't know what he did with it. You say it's not doing you any harm, Roy. What about your weight loss? What? Just uh, tension and fatigue. Uh, Dr. Mason didn't think so. She wanted more tests. You're suggesting our weight loss is due to a hex? I suggest you both get out of this cottage as fast as you can. Now, forget the recording we were going to do. Forget looking for the straw thing. Pack up and get out tonight. Roy, I'm frightened. And you better be. I told you about the others, Roy. What others? I never told her. An older man who lived here before, and then a young girl after him. Both disappeared, never a trace. Roy, is that true? All I know is what Andy tells me. It's true. How or where they disappeared to, no one knows. But there's something unholy here. And I want you two out of it. Roy, that that odor we we thought was seaweed, we first noticed it the day after I surprised Margareta in the cottage. What do you think? She was planting the doll here? Mm-hmm. It could be. It's been hidden in here all the time, until Tiger found it. Okay, okay, let's not lose our scientific heads. I wouldn't wait, Roy. Just leave. You're paid in advance. Take my apartment. I'll bunk in with Jim McDonough. Okay, Andy, uh, we'll get out, but... One more night's not going to make any difference. Okay, that's up to you. But you'll leave in the morning? I'll tell Miss Sagamore. First thing. Oh, what a heavenly morning. It makes last night seem like a nightmare. Yeah, I'll go up and tell Miss Sagamore we're leaving. I'll come. You don't have to. You're not leaving me alone. That's too bad we... Couldn't get any more tapings last night. Not a sound in the walls. Frankly, I don't care. I'm sorry to leave this charming cottage. We won't find another one as pretty, but I hope we don't find another one as sinister. Oh, come on, Peg. I don't think there's anything sinister here. I, I really don't understand Andy. For a scientist like him to go ape over what he thinks might be voodoo. That is what frightens me. Andy's a reasonable, logical man, and... He's concerned. He, he's no superstitious kook. Well, we'll have done with it. Goodbye, Miss Sagamore. I looked all over for that straw thing this morning. I, I, I couldn't find it. Oh, Tiger probably took it out in the rain and it's gone. I can't believe neither of them aren't home. I'll try the door. It's not locked. Miss Sagamore? Hello? Miss Sagamore! Should we go in? Oh, no, no reason to. Uh, I'll leave a note in the cottage. Well, they're evidently not here. But I would love to see upstairs before we go. Now who's snooping? You're right. But let's just take a peek, huh? Yeah, okay. Maybe they're upstairs and didn't hear us. I still think we should leave a note. Miss Sagamore! This place is like a museum. Oh, I can't imagine living here. How does she stand it? Oh, I guess in its day it was fantastic. Now it's just old and dingy. Let's go upstairs. I've just got to see that ballroom. Oh, Roy! What a room! Oh, well, there must be hundreds. 
hundreds of them. Is this where she holds her parties? Uh, I don't see how she dare with all this china. Hundreds and hundreds of figurines. But we saw people dancing. There were shadows on the curtains. Well, maybe this isn't the same room. Well, it has to be. Hey, look. On the table by the window. The clowns? Pierrot and Pierrette from the old Italian Commedia dell'arte. The figures are so lifelike. So smooth. Oh, I wouldn't touch it if I were you. Oh, it's a music box. They dance. Those must have been the shadows we saw against the curtains. These are Miss Sagamore's party guests? Oh, she's an old woman lost in her memories and souvenirs. I, uh... I, I think we ought to get going. These things are all so beautiful. Oh, this table seems to be all fairy tale characters. And over there, a complete English drawing room. Well, even Bo Peep's sheep look real. Except for the size. Oh, I'm going to take a chance and hold Bo Peep. Oh, it's just perfect. But no name. Usually the designer's mark is on the bottom. But such Perfect features. <laughs> she sort of looks like Marilyn Monroe, only darker. What? What's the matter? You've gone white as a sheep. Let me see that. Well, be careful with it. It can't be. Roy, what is it, for heaven's sake? When Andy told me about the girl who had the cottage before us, the, the one who disappeared, he showed me a picture her parents had sent around. Come on. We got to get out of here fast. And I mean fast. Hurry. Just hurry. Don't pack. Just get the stuff out of the car as fast as you can. I'm hurrying. Oh, get out of the way, Tiger. Oh, Roy. What is it? In the drawer. Another doll. Don't touch it. It wouldn't matter. The spell is cast. No. Oh. How did you get in here? There is no. listening to Andy. It is nightmarish. I tried so hard to warn you. Who? Who are you? George Dobert's the name. I've been hiding from them for more than a year. You mean you? I was one of the former tenants, yes. I don't believe any of this. Very well. Look out there, then. There, through the opening in the baseboard. Good Lord. That's the bedroom. A hundred times as big. Now you believe me. I tried to warn you. I tried to warn that young girl a few months ago. But neither of you could understand my squeaks. That was you we heard in the walls? Yes. Peggy. Where is Peggy? Margareta got her before the cat did. That's all they wanted. I don't think they're interested in you yet. I've got to find her. Help her. Oh, that's impossible. Don't dare venture out. I'm not staying here. Peggy's in danger. Roy! Peggy! It's Andy. Andy, help us! Roy! Where are you two? Andy! In here! Behind the baseboard! You've got to help us! You've got to find Peggy! Find 
Peggy! It's no use, you know. All he can hear are your little squeaks. Little mouse squeaks. Just like you heard from me. I'm going out there. No, no. If you value your life. You My know. life? It'll be funny. I've got to get to Peggy somehow. I'm not staying here if Peggy's in danger. Don't. You can't help her. I'll show you how to live in here, how to get food, how to avoid them. Not a chance. I'm going out there, Peg. Stop, Mr. Watson. Don't go out there. I'm going to find my wife. I don't care about anything else. Come back, please. I tried to warn you. Yes? Miss Sagamore. Oh, you're from the weapons factory. I remember you. Oh, forget about our past differences. I want to know what happened to the Watsons. What happened? What do you... Don't mi- play games, Miss Sagamore. I was there in the cottage last night. I know about the voodoo doll. And now they're gone. Gone? I warned them to get out, but all their things are still in the cottage. They didn't leave of their own accord. Oh, I'm sure I don't know. I, I don't keep track of my tenants coming and going. <laughs> Okay, Miss Sagamore. Have it your way. But you haven't heard the end of this. They were friends of mine. And I'm following this one up. You should have let me handle him. (sighs) Perhaps I will. He was always a bother. And now it appears he's becoming troublesome. Besides, I do need a taller Louis XIV for my Marie. (laughs) Is she ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <gasps> Margareta. She's perfect. One of your best to date. Mm. I'm pleased with it myself. The glaze is particularly good, I think. Her, Margareta. Her. Not it. <laughs> My Marie Antoinette. My beautiful Marie Antoinette. Your court is waiting, my dear. Over here, by the window. And soon, we'll have a nice, tall, handsome Louis XIV for you. Mm-hmm. Well, at least this Marie Antoinette won't lose her head. Unless, of course, she happens to fall to the floor which seems unlikely under Miss Sagamore's watchful eye and loving care. Her figurine collection is her life. I suppose for Peggy Watson, it was her fate. She ended as she did for two reasons, really. The first, she was the spitting image of Marie Antoinette. The second, she made the mistake of renting Sagamore Cottage. I'll be back shortly. Except for one thing that bothers me a little. Tiger. Now that Roy and Peggy won't be around to care for him, he's going to find it tough going. I do hope someone remembers to feed him, poor kitten. He hasn't had a thing since Roy. Our cast included Bob Caliban, Carmen Matthews, Janet Waldo, Bryna Rayburn, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. What's happened? I can't open my eyes. Whose voice is that? Sounds like my commanding officer. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives. Those are the words of the burial service. Who are the buried? Though his body be destroyed, yet shall I see God. That huge explosion. That's it. An enemy shell must have hit the frame of the shed ransom and I was standing on, just as I was about to pull the trigger of my rifle. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May the Lord receive the soul of Jerome Searing. They're burying me. Amen. No. It must not be. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure 
in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.